Well, good morning, friends. Coach Bob with you here for another Worship on Wheels. It's number 30-something. I know that. Man, we have passed 30. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But life is good. You know, it's funny. Um, I'm going to share a little story with you here before we get into the Bible verse. As you can see, I'm flying without a net. No GPS and no phone. What's up with that? <laughs> With this episode, I just thought it was important not to have a crutch. All right. I'm going to share a little bit about a fellow that I used to know. When I say I used to know him, that means he is no longer with us. He, he died years ago. He owned a TV, but he didn't watch TV. In fact, his television was always unplugged and pushed in the corner until we visited, and then he would take the TV out and plug it in for us kids to watch. It was my grandfather, my Papa Crawford. If it sounds kind of country, Papa, that's because it was kind of country. He wasn't a man of means. He was just a great guy. He lived in a little Florida cracker style house. You know, for those who are from Florida, you, you know what that is. You can look it up on the internet and see what a Florida cracker house looks like. Um, but the truth is, now they're kind of cool and in vogue. You're going to see some cool ones. And then you're going to see the ones that look pretty rough. We'll just suffice it to say that the house they lived in was a two-bedroom, one-bath. Um, the living room and the dining room opened up together. Had hardwood pine floors and cedar closets. The bathroom you walked into, and it was all cedar walls. Had a claw tub had a razor strap hanging on the back of the door where he would sharpen his straight razor to shave with. You had to almost turn sideways to get around the claw tub to get to the toilet. It was very small. And then in the kitchen, if you opened the refrigerator all the way open, you would hit the stove slant oven on the other side of the room, which was gas, of course. And if you made a right turn at the stove, and I mean literally just turning <laughs> you could put your hand in the sink I remember seeing my mother and my granny Crawford cooking in that kitchen and they basically had to be like a choreographed dance or they would just knock each other over because you could not pass a person in that kitchen it was it was too small but my papa Crawford he was a man who never complained about anything he never raised his voice you know I never even heard a profane word come out of his mouth, not one single time in my life. I never heard him raise his voice one time in my life. That's, that's pretty amazing. That's a pretty amazing feat, certainly by today's standard, where, you know, everyone thinks cussing is cool. Well, I, you know, I can't express myself if I don't cuss. Then maybe you don't need to express yourself. <laughs> I'll leave it. I'll leave that one there. You can do that one whatever you want. <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't cuss. And you know his life. I don't. I never saw him wear anything more than a simple button-up, pressed white shirt. Nothing more. That was what he wore. No, it wasn't for religious reasons or anything like that. He was just a simple man. He had no need to make a statement. His statement was, honor your God and love your family. That was his statement. And that's what he did. He was a good man. He was a good man. He buried an infant son. He buried a teenage daughter. A son in his late teens, early 20s, fight in the Korean conflict, who almost lost his life, suffered from severe frostbite, all kinds of crazy things. He had Parkinson's disease. He shook like a leaf on a tree. He had Marie Charcot tooth, Tic du Leroux, all sorts of nervous system problems. And when he died, his little body wasted away to nothing. And he was sweet and endured to the end. I never heard a complaint come across his lips. Not one time. Not one time. And every night when I would go to bed, when I spent the night over there, I would lay in a little room right outside of the living room, and he would sit in a little recliner chair that he had. It wasn't nice, it was pretty beat up as a matter of fact, and he would sit there, and I could see his reflection. There was a bookcase, and I could look at the, re the bookcase and see his reflection. 
and he would sit there and read his Bible. Now, as a boy, I thought, man, Papa, he's a slow reader. He's been reading that book for years. He still ain't got through it. What is up with that? I mean, even as a kid, I get through my books quicker than that. That's pretty bad. That's what I thought. And then years later, I came across this verse, Psalm 119, 105. And that's why I don't have anything here. I, wa I, wanted, I wanted to share this with you. It says that your word, talk about the Bible, God's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And what he was doing every night, I didn't realize, he was putting batteries in his flashlight. That's what he was doing. I was thinking, slow reader, bing. Nope. Wrong again, Bob. He was just putting batteries in his light. You know, when bad things happen in our lives, And never be so naive as to think that bad things won't happen to you. Bad things happen to the good and to the wicked. In fact, also good things happen to the good and the wicked. You know, the Bible says that the, the sun shines on the wicked and the, and the good. And the rain falls on both. It does. So, you know, you can, there again, you can do without what you want. But the reality is this. How we deal with things how we handle blessings and how we handle problems are dramatically different. Whether it's stomping around and cussing and screaming and hollering and showing our hineys to the world, or whether we're cool, calm, collected. We, we operate in a world of honor and dignity. Those things matter. It's not about hiding your feelings. It's about being a grown-up. And you know what? The reality is this. When you know how to respond, when you feed yourself with the proper intellectual and spiritual food, you'll respond better. You know, my, my, my papa, he always, whenever I was a boy, I would ask him a question. And he would have these little poignant, short, simple answers that when you started peeling the layers off of the onion, it was way more complex. And I'm like, how did he know that? How did he know that the answer that he gave was not only going to apply to now, but to eight situations down the road? And I'm going to tell you why. Because he was wise. Because he was getting batteries every night. He was stowing them away. He was getting replacement light bulbs and all the things you need to illuminate your path. That's what he was doing every single night. And he would have the answers. And it was the coolest thing. I remember as a boy sitting at his feet. Yes, I sat at his feet. I sat in the floor by his chair and would talk to him and ask him questions. And it was an honor to sit at his feet, a man of wisdom, a man with patience. And everyone knew it. When you walked in the room, he demanded your attention. He never said a word. He never even gave you a, a harsh glance. You just knew. You just wanted to be around him. You wanted to hug him. You felt better when you hugged him. You felt better when you when you smelled that pressed white shirt. You just did. There was a magic about him. And that magic was his wisdom that he had accrued over years of studying the Bible. No, not in a college, not in a theological seminary. No, in the living room of a Florida cracker house that most of us would look at and go, man, what a dump. <laughs> you know, he lit his way to the very end. And the lights that he built were so bright, they're still illuminating my path. Because he passed it down to me, and I am eternally grateful. You know, you don't have to use that light if you don't want to. Man, you can step on jagged rocks and walk through the briars and even walk right off the side of the mountain if you want to. 
that's your call. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and I will use his light to illuminate the path wherever I go. All right, well, there you have it. Another words from wheels in the books, baby. I just want you to know this, my friends. You, yes, you, you're loved and so am I. And that is really, really good news. Now, you know what you got to do. You know it now because you just got some new light bulbs. You got some new batteries. You're ready to go light the path. All right. You go change the world. We'll see you on the road really soon. You be safe out there. Man, what a beautiful day. Look at this road. Absolutely magnificent. <laughs> Woo.